Welcome back to At The Mic with Michael Schumacher. Special guests today from the Beersford softball team. And I'm going to have them introduce themselves. They are all on the line at once. And so we're going to have them introduce themselves. And I'll just let you guys start. Hi, guys. I'm Hallie Livingston. I'm a senior. Um, I'm Keely Merrigan. I'm a junior at Beersford. I'm Harley Coast. I'm a sophomore. I'm Lily Seibert. I'm a junior. All right. Now, for each of you, uh, what position or positions do you play on the team? And about how long have you been playing uh, playing softball? Um, I have. I play third base, and I've been playing softball since T-ball, so ever since we've been able to play. That's how long I've been playing. I'm at the shortstop, and I've been playing softball since probably seven or eight. I play second base, and I play people and then I stopped at fifth grade so I missed three solid years of softball and started playing again freshman year. Um, I'm first base and I've also been playing since t-ball pretty much. All right well excellent well you guys are heading back to state uh, you know coming into this season was this something you guys thought you could accomplish was this a goal of yours uh, and you know where do you guys think you can how do you guys think you can do at state? Um this being my last year, I was really hoping for state, and I knew that we could. I knew we could pull it off, especially going into state last year. Um, I think we're just going to go out there, try and kick some butt, and just see where we end up. Yeah, hundred percent. Been it's been a goal this year since we made it last year, I think, and I mean, do it as best as we possibly can. All right. Uh, well, I tell you what. Uh, as far as a team, you know, everyone obviously has their own position. What do you what do you think are your strengths as a team that you feel like okay, pretty much any game we go into, we know we can rely upon this because I know you've had some great games where you guys have just been able to score a bunch of runs. You've had obviously some great games of pitching with you know no hitters and shutouts. Uh, but what is your most consistent aspect to this team? Um, I think like. Like you said, with the pitching and stuff, that definitely contributes to it. But I think even just, like, staying together as a team, because, like, there's been multiple games where we've been down by quite a bit, and we still come back and get the win because we just, you know, kind of restart almost. So just kind of sticking together the whole time, no matter the circumstance. I agree. I think we're definitely a team where it's not just, like, well, there's this group and that group. Like, we're all one team. We're all sisters, I guess you could say. Um but in the game-wise, I think our outfield has definitely played a big part. They kind of save us sometimes, so grateful for them. All right, now yeah, I did. Hundred percent. Sorry. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, our outfield is hundred percent. I think we can always rely on them. I don't have a doubt in my mind that if it gets hit past the infield, that they'll take care of business out there. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and you know, you mentioned the outfield because I, I've broadcast a number of games, and I, I don't think people realize with the softball uh, how different it is. I, I think people are just used to baseball, and they kind of try to transpose all of that on. Uh, how difficult is it for an outfielder, but even an infielder? It's a there's a good size difference between a baseball and a softball. And I, I don't think people re- recognize how difficult that ball can be, especially when it's going at a decent rate of speed, to actually get it and glove it and, and, and wrap it up. I think those are things that people just don't quite get. What are some th- other things that you think people don't quite realize when they're watching softball if they haven't watched it before that makes it a really unique sport? Um, well, being at third base, it's people call it the hot corner, you know, so sometimes, like, People, when they get a hold on the ball, they hit the sweet spot or whatever, it comes at you pretty fast, and it either goes right to you, right over your head, right through your legs, to try and stop it. But, yeah, the ball can come in pretty fast, and it's not an easy thing to do, but I think most of us are good with that. We've experienced this year playing on a variety of different fields. So, like, uh, we played on turf a few times and at different complexes, so it's all different. And then just playing at home and stuff so it's all different so 
the world does a lot of different things on different <laughs> yes, yep. We've all experienced that in a different way. So. Yeah, I don't think people realize that the difference between a dirt field and a turf field are two completely different things. Yeah. Well, and I've noticed that too, and, and I've always been meaning to ask, and I never have, so I'm going to do it now. What, it seems like sliding on dirt seems natural. I mean, it seems like the, the dirt allows you to slide. Turf doesn't seem like it necessarily has that same capabilities. Is there, when you talk about differences, is that one of them as well? Yes, definitely. Um, sliding on turf, you just, once you slide, you do not stop going. <laughs> um, we've actually, we had a girl that slid completely over the base and had to, like, turn around and put her hand on it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, turf shoes really help on turf. I learned that from experience. Tennis shoes are very yeah. slippery on turf. <laughs> that helps a lot. Oh, I bet that I bet that's right. You know, I don't even think about different footwear uh, out there. You know, and like you talked about the different fields, you know, People are used to baseball where it's, you know, a grass infield, you have the dirt or, or turf. But, I mean, with with softball, sometimes you have completely dirt infields. Sometimes you have, like you said, turf infields, grass outfields. How do you adjust for that, and how, how difficult is that? I mean, what kind of mental preparation is there, um, especially if you have a grass outfield, the ball bounces differently, then turf seems to be pretty uniform. Yeah, 100%. It just all bounces different, so we just try to get as many reps as we can, like free game on the field that we're playing on. So it's easier to maneuver during the game. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Well, I tell you what, uh, you know, in Class A, I did not get a chance to see you guys compete. I, I did come and watch you guys over the weekend, uh, this past weekend. But, uh, you know, Class A seemed to have a lot of tough competition. And, of course, West Central is one of the top teams. But you guys have had an extensive uh, schedule this season, top teams in, in Class A, some of the top Class B teams. Uh, how do you guys feel this has prepared you for, for state? I think we've um, seen a ton of different, like, speeds pitcher-wise and just a ton of different, like, chemistry on different teams. So get to know our strengths against the strengths of other teams, as many games as possible we got in, which is always great for us. Yeah, our coaches are definitely good at for practice, like practicing fastballs and slower pitches because, I mean, some schools we've seen, they're just all fastballs, super fast, but then other schools are just meatballs coming kind of slow. But, yeah, I just got to adjust to all that. So, All right. Um, now, were all of you on the team last year? And then this year, any of you first year? players this for this squad we were all on it last year yep. all right so uh, what was it like being a part of it last year just being part of that inaugural season that inaugural state tournament what kind of uh, recognizing that as far as beersford history goes you guys will be that first team you guys will all nobody can take that away from you what did that uh, what was that like and then how has this second season been different yeah i think it last year was super special to all of us i did I mean, for me personally, going into the Sodak 16, I didn't really think it was, like, that big of a game until I, like, realized, like, oh, my gosh, like, we're actually yeah. going to state. Like, because I've never been a part of a team, like, that's going to state mm-hmm. like yeah. that, you know. Yeah. Um, so that was super special. And I think this year, or as far as this year goes, we've set the standard pretty high to want to go back. Um, so I think that's helped to push us even more each game and as a team, so. All right. I agree, and even the like the not the game side of the yeah, softball, like it's just fun. Like last year at the hotel, went in the pool a bunch. Like it's just it's just a good atmosphere to be around. And the parents, they had a big shout out to them because they always <laughs> yeah. they got us covered with the snacks, the drinks, mm-hmm. everything. So yeah. I feel like we've grown a lot closer this yeah. year. We all us from seventh graders to seniors, we are so close. Yep. Yeah, it's just crazy how good we are to each other. Oh. One big family. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, and that brings up a, a, an interesting point, too, just because I think in uh, softball, more more so than I see in volleyball or basketball, you know, in track and field's a lot more of an individual sport, but you do have this wide berth of, you know, you have seventh graders, eighth graders, you know, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors, How and you guys talk about one big family. 
has that been how has that been to incorporate uh, girls that are four or five six years younger than some of you I mean it was super weird at first I'm not gonna lie I mean <laughs> yeah. yep. I grew up helping coach some of these kids that are coming in and now we're all on the same team but I mean it's great we're super close just some people feel responsible for the younger ones and like the best way possible and it just I don't it, Literally, the best way to describe it is a big family. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and then, like, we have to take into account that, like, we have seventh graders starting pitching for us, which yeah. you'd never think that would be a thing. But, yeah, I don't know. I love it. They're doing great. They're mm-hmm. working their butts off. Yeah. It's crazy that they're so great. And I'm like, I, I, I've never <laughs> think of that. Like, yeah. They yep. seem like seniors to me almost. But, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and does it reach that point where you just kind of even just forget that they are – you know, a seventh grader, especially after they get a few games under their belts, a few victories, a few clutch uh, plays, and all of a sudden it's just, that's now just a teammate, not a seventh, that's a seventh grade teammate? Yeah, yeah, you explained it perfectly. They're, they don't really have like an age to them, they're just one of our teammates, yeah. All right, well, excellent. Well, I tell you what, I have some icebreakers, and uh, you know, you got, if you choose not to answer, that's completely fine. But if you just want to identify yourself uh, before you do answer, and these are easy. These are all low-hanging fruit. There are no wrong answers. It's just whatever comes to mind. Uh, I find them fun. Hopefully everyone else does too. If you don't, I apologize. Uh, but uh, uh, the first one I always like to ask just because I get a variety of answers. You have one final meal, and you know it's going to be your final meal, but you can have anything you want. What are you going to have? Um, I'm Hallie. I would definitely do a good shrimp Alfredo with a mm. good, nice breadstick. <laughs> Love, I like shrimp, like Alfredo, or mac and cheese. That's my number one. <laughs> I'm oh. Keely, and I would absolutely want to go to Chili's and get some honey chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Lily, and I think I answered the same question when I did the basketball interview, but it's, my answer is still the same. It would be a big bowl of cereal. <laughs> <laughs> What's cereal? Captain Crunch. <laughs> um, I would probably choose not a whole meal, but Olive Garden is always my favorite. Mm-hmm. Some type of Italian food. Yeah. All right, and, and, and you go to Olive Garden, you can get the never-ending pasta. So you could you could make it how, however you wanted to do that. So that'd be awesome. All right, yep. and, chi- <laughs> and chilies and good answers, good <laughs> answers. All right, and so yeah, Lily's been through this, so she's uh She's going to think, man, he's got to get new material. But see, I, I always have new people going here. So, uh, you know, next one is hopefully, hopefully your music fans. I, I've uh, interestingly found a couple of people that were not, and we've switched to podcasts. So if you're not a music fan and maybe podcasts are your thing, but three artists, musical artists that uh, you could, if you could see them live in concert from throughout history, who would you choose? Um, I'm Hallie. I would, I've already seen him, but Zach Bryan, he's my number one. Love him. Um, I recently went to Nashville last year. I love Elvis Presley. I think that would be so fun to see him. Ooh. And then probably, I'm basic, but probably Morgan Wallen. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm Keely, and I would, I'm going to, I'm going to agree with Hallie on the Elvis Presley one. That would be amazing to see him live. Um, and then I'd go Noah Kahn. Hmm. And then um, probably Greta Van Fleet. Okay. Wait, I changed my I changed one of my answers. I have to add Green Day. I think that would be so fun. <laughs> okay. And did, and did you say Greta Van Fleet? I did. Oh, nice. All right. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm Harley, and I would probably choose the I don't know if you've heard of them, the Turnpike Troubadours. Oh, they're like wonderful. Yes, they're so good. And then I'd probably do Zach Bryan as well. And then I'd probably do Morgan Wallen. All right. I'm, I'm sensing the theme. Morgan Wallen's getting in there a few times and stuff. But Elvis, you know, good, good. Now, is that everybody? Uh, yeah, I didn't go, but I, I don't really know. I can't choose. <laughs> okay, nope, no problem with that. All right. And then f- the final one here for kind of these icebreakers you can travel back in history and return safely one time to when would you travel and why? Oh, I'm Harley, and I would definitely travel back to Elvis Presley and watch a live concert. 
Okay. <laughs> that would be so much fun. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm Hallie. I don't know, but I think this kind of sounds bad, but Dazed and Confused is one of my favorite movies. I would definitely go back to them. That movie, it just looks like so much fun, which I don't know if that's how it was back in the day for sure, but that just looks like such a good time. I have a feeling it's pretty I'm, accurate. I'm gonna, no, go ahead. I'm going to go... Real old. I'm like 1700s. I want to see what one of those elegant ball gowns feels like <laughs> to wish around. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right. No idea. No idea? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, nope, there's nothing wrong with that. We're kind of all over the map with that. I liked it. I like it. All right. And then finally, money's no object. You can only buy one thing. What would it be? Hmm. <clears throat> Only buy one thing. Oh. You said there's no money limit, just buy one thing. Right. I'm Keely, and I'll go real basic. Nice big house. All right. I don't know why this came to my head. I'm hardly, I would think of like America. (laughs) (laughs) You know what? That is the first time somebody said that, and I I can't argue with it. If you can just buy it. (laughs) All right. You're Um, thinking big. I'm Hallie. No, no. I'm Hallie. I think I would buy Nike. I love Mm. Nike everything, so I would just buy their company and then. Everything would come to me for free. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Once again. No answer again? <laughs> um, I would buy endless amounts of cereal. <laughs> I'm, I'm sensing a theme here. All right. <laughs> well, boy, Nike or America. Those are good. Those, those Man, those are big thoughts. I like that. I always thought I'd buy I'd buy like the Minnesota Twins if it, if it were up to me. You know, just oh yeah, that's my team. Plus, then I have a steady source of income. But you get that with Nike as well. So, yeah, uh, I don't know America. We kind of seem broken right now. But if you buy it, I think you could fix it. So that would be awesome. <laughs> All right. And then finally, you know, you guys are heading to state. Um, yeah, and you're at various ages and stuff. But obviously, you've had people along your way, whether it's somebody in your life personally or somebody that you held up as an example just in softball or basketball or whatever career you want to choose. Who, who's maybe one or two, who would be one or two people that you hold up and you say, if I can be or live my life like him or her, I know I'll be a success? Um, I'm Keely, and I'll probably just, my parents, I mean, they, they're they incredible, and they support me so well, and if I could live to even have some of the success that they've had throughout their lives, I'd be very happy. Yeah, I got, I have, I have to agree. My parents or um, grandmas and grandpas, they definitely don't disappoint when it comes to support for their grandkids, any of them. I think that goes for all of us. All of our grandmas and grandpas are always at games and stuff. Um, but for me personally, I like love my aunt and uncle. They're always they're always supporting me, whether it's coming to games, watching me online. Like it's uh, there's just endless months of support from family. I think. Yep, I agree. My um, all of my family has always been super supportive, but especially my mom. She just my best friend, and so I just think that she is always lifting me up no matter what, and will believe in me no matter what. So she'd be my biggest. My family, too. Um, my grandparents are always running around with all his cousins, and it's crazy how they get to all our games. And my parents as well. I'm just so thankful for them all the time. And I feel like God's had a big impact in my life, and mm-hmm. I just see so much more happening with them. But, yeah, my family is a huge impact. All right. Well, those were very good answers. I appreciate you putting up with my uh, icebreakers. Before we wrap <laughs> up, uh, you know, you guys... Uh, are getting ready to head to state again. And, you know, you've had the fans, you've had your family. Um, what do you do? What What's your kind of plan? You know, you're heading, we're heading into Memorial Day weekend. Uh, just what's kind of your plan as you get ready to head up there? What, what will you do this weekend? Uh, obviously, you want to have some fun with family and stuff, but you also kind of start focusing on state. What will the next four or five days be for you guys? Um, 
this is Hallie. For me, it's going to be to not overpack because I'm terrible <laughs> at that. But um, other than that, no, it's just getting like the the mental side of the game. It's just getting your head in the right headspace for that. Um, just to try to go out there and kick butt, win or lose, I think we're going to do great no matter what. Um, yeah, I think about it for me. Yeah, just like we only have a few more practices until we head to Aberdeen. So just staying locked in with those and. I mean, we still have a ton of fun at practice every day, but just kind of focusing in on those and, um, yeah, just looking forward to going to see. Yep, just really working hard in these next practices that we have, putting in as much effort as we can, 100% all the time during practices to lead up to see. Yeah, because this weekend will be a weekend, and then when Monday hits, we'll have our mindset set on state. I'm assuming our coach will have everything yeah. ready to go. <laughs> And when state comes, we're gonna we're gonna do our best. So. All right. Well, ladies, I know you guys have practice, and I do not want to be a reason that you're uh, <laughs> that you say you know if we hadn't had that stupid interview, you know we wouldn't have allowed that run in. So I'm gonna let you guys go <laughs> because I know you have practice. But thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to be up there covering some Class B teams, so uh, I'll be in the same complex. I'm going to be looking forward to keeping an eye on how you guys are doing over there. Um, and so best of luck with everything. Uh, best of luck for, uh, you know, all three days and uh, see how things go for you guys. Uh, it's been a joy to talk to you, and uh, I look forward to uh, seeing how you guys do next weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you, you, Mike. Thank you. That was our profile of the Beersford Watchdogs softball team. Uh, as we got to talk to them, they'll be heading to state on uh, games to start on Thursday. So we will be giving you the updates on them. We'll be up there covering Class B. Uh, we'd love to be covering Beersford, but just with one person, B and A can overlap. And depending on who wins, who loses, uh, don't want to promise, make promises it can't keep. So, but we will be keeping updates on them and hopefully we can uh, keep tabs on them. Maybe get a couple of interviews if they're uh, being successful. Um, cause they're probably less likely to want to talk if they're not, but we, uh, have good feeling. They have a solid team hitting pitching. I think they are going to achieve some success. So that was a part of our state softball preview, uh, featuring these Beersford watchdogs. All right, we'll be back with more on At the Mic with Michael Schumacher, brought to you by JR's Oasis, more than a fuel station, more than a convenience store. It's your one-stop travel shop here on ESPN Radio, 101.5 FM, 1570 AM, KVTK, Vermilion, and Yankton.